we've been sitting here for about an hour now, um, tucked up in this little riverbank. It's coming out to try to do some waterfowl. I mean, there's fox tracks everywhere. So where we are right now is a little tributary off a major river system in Alaska. And uh, in the fall, coho and chum salmon, they like to come up this little tributary and spawn. And that brings all sorts of predation to this area. You got, uh, I've seen multiple fox tracks, some fox scat, there's a couple wolf prints that I ran across, um, eagles, you got uh, your standard ravens, and uh, it's a really good spot just to set up like we are right now and hope to find something. But uh, I'll probably give this spot another hour maybe, and then we'll move up, see what else we can get into. goodness she came right at us Abs oh man it was oh my goodness gracious oh check this out just absolutely stunning oh my goodness that just happened. I'm stoked. I've been waiting here for, uh, like I said, about an hour and 45 minutes. She came around that bank and she was flying straight down at the river and uh, she was flying right at me and I cracked off a couple shots and then uh, she saw me at the very end and banked up to the left and flew away. But I uh, was really, really pumped. Ah, what a way to start the morning, you know? Come out here, get all set up and uh, boom. Ah, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, so yeah, they come off those tributaries and they come up here uh, a little bit south of where that major river system is and they spawn and uh, a lot of predation happens like I was saying. Um, a lot of predation happens. Uh, you get wolf, fox, bald eagles, ravens, ducks hang out. Um, what else have I seen out here? That's really all I've seen. Um, but it is, it is such a cool little place out on this big flat delta area where uh, it freezes up over the winter. But uh, oh, I'm so glad we got to start the morning like that. But let's pack up, let's get out of here and uh, let's go see if we can get on to uh, moose or caribou or something. Let's just get out of here and uh, see where the day takes us. everything packed up we get another mallard comes straight down the bottleneck but, uh, <laughs> it happens that way no big deal poor guy scared the crap out of him too uh, 
we have packed up now and uh, let's get out of here. another cow about 20 feet from her uh, north of her and uh, we're just gonna hang out with them for a while see what they do man they are gorgeous and that backdrop look at that backdrop oh man Hopefully she lets us hang out for a while. Let's see. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try to move up on him. The goal is to get at an angle where we can get some of this background in there with him, because it's just incredible. just about enough of me so uh, I'm gonna let them eat in peace for a while head back uh, I think it's about time to get the ghillie suit on to be honest let's go back to the bag get the ghillie suit on and then uh, see if maybe we can sit with something else um, these two aren't they're not really liking it so much that I'm sitting here so I'm not gonna push it uh, so we'll pack up and we'll get back on out of here Damn, got the ghillie suit on. Uh, I was shooting that nice time lapse you just watched uh, while I was changing, but uh, oh, check this out. Mm. Do not eat Alaskan acorns, because it's moose shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep on going. Up this little hill right here. Keep heading up there. Let's see what we can get into. Okay, so the goal is uh, to hike up along this little basin right here under this little terrain feature and uh, move up quietly up by these trees. Do you see the little wood line, the little tree line right there? caribou I've seen they come up over this little hill under this basin and they move up right into that little tree line uh, so hopefully hopefully they're there because I couldn't find them out on the flats so uh, we'll move uh, like I said we'll move this way and uh, see if we can pick up some caribou right there in the wood line All right, let's let's get after it So, uh, 
obviously we're in the tree line, but also something I wanted to show you guys. Voila! Trans-Alaskan pipeline. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Maybe seen it on TV or read a book with it. There it is though. It just goes, cuts across. I mean, it's called the Trans-Alaska Pipeline for a reason. But it just goes, goes all the way across. You can kind of see it running the length of the state right there. But uh, yeah, it's always pretty cool to see. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking 100 more yards or so on the back side of this little draw. And then we'll put the bag down, put the gear down, and then uh, see if we can find this caribou. Alright, so same concept as before. I'm gonna try to get myself tucked into this snow drift right here, kind of overlooking this uh, this little valley. Uh, it's not really a valley. It's more like a little dip <laughs> in the terrain. But uh, there's some caribou off in the distance. We'll see if we can get them to uh, to kind of move in this way. So let's see. I did it. I managed to pull off a super rookie move. <laughs> so right when we went out there and got set up in that little snow drift, the video camera died. I didn't bring an extra Z6 battery. I had one charging in the truck. So we get out there and it's like, well, and the D850 is a brick for video, an absolute brick. I love the camera, but don't, don't try to do any video with it. So, uh, what ended up happening was uh, the herd moved through. I won't say herd. Two or three of them moved through and it was, it was almost instantaneous. They were moving from uh, northeast to southwest and they came through and they caught a sight of me, even in the ghillie suit, and then they hightailed it. They were gone. So uh, I managed to crack off uh, three or four pictures. I'll put them up right now. You can kind of get an idea of, uh, of what I was looking at. was dead I uh, decided it was time to pack up and leave as you can see the the clouds are kind of socking in behind us um, which, I mean it's kind of pretty light but uh, it's been a long day the batteries are starting to give out on these cameras I'm starting to give out so uh, I'll drink this last cup of coffee and uh, head on out of here today was incredible though right I mean it started off we had the most amazing waterfowl picture. I'm, I'm so excited about that picture. Um, it may not be, you know, world class, but it was the experience. It was the hiking out early in the morning up the river, getting set up, you know, laying down along the bank and uh, just waiting for them to fly in. So I am so stoked on that picture. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be 
this perfect picture, you know, the picture, it's got to speak to you first and foremost. It's got to be something that uh, you're really proud of, uh, more so than anybody else. You know, some of my favorite images are mediocre at best, but uh, it's the experience behind them. It was the story I can tell behind it. And when I look at that picture, I'm immediately brought back to, uh, to the day that, or the, the adventure that led me to that photo. So uh, keep that in mind when you go out, you know, even if it's not, you know, perfect light or, you know, you may be too slow on the shutter speed, too fast on the shutter speed, underexposed, overexposed, wrong, wrong f-stop, anything, any number of things that happen every time we go out photographing. But as long as you look at that picture and you're excited about it, I think that's all that matters at the end of the day. Um, go back to video one for pro tip, uh, leave a dang battery in your glove so you don't wind up having a dead battery when caribou walk through. But uh, no big deal. Uh, we'll get out here and we'll do it again. This time with a, with a good battery. All right, so today's pro tip brought to you by uh, hand warmers. Oh my goodness. So I'm a little bit obsessive about this just because too many times I've been out photographing or on an adventure and uh, I feel like I'm actually going to lose a digit. So uh, today is the first day that I went out and I got toe warmers. So I've always used hand warmers. But uh, I went out and I got toe warmers, right? And uh, the reason is, is because I wear wool socks, just like I'm sure a lot of you do when I'm out here in the Arctic. But uh, since it's starting to get really warm, my feet are starting to sweat more than usual which means when I'm hiking, my feet will get really sweaty. And then the second I stop and I set up shop and I get ready to, to you know, bundle in and wait for the, the animals, the sweat starts to cool and dissipate and evaporate and then my feet are freezing. So what I did is I put a couple of these in my boot, just the toe warmers. And uh, let me tell you, my feet have not been cold once today, even, uh, even after the hiking and the sweating and, uh, and all that. So I highly recommend if you haven't tried the toe warmers, to go out and get you a pair if you're going to be hiking and sitting and uh, fluctuating your body temperature like that. But uh, just a little pro tip for today. Um, hope it helps you as much as it helped me. But I'm going to finish off this cup of coffee and then I am going to head out of here. But uh, cheers and uh, I'll see you in the next one.